Hello ladies and gentlemen. In today's video I'm going to show you how to go from scientific notation to standard form. As you can see here we have three important things that we need to remember when going from scientific notation to standard form. Now the first thing you need to do is you need to move the decimal point according to the power of 10. Now a number written in scientific notation it has two parts. It has the base that is being multiplied times a power of 10. Now there's always an exponent up here on the power of 10. This exponent tells you how many times you move the decimal point. That brings us to the next two important things we need to know is that if that exponent is positive, the decimal point is going to move to the right. And if that exponent is negative, that means that the decimal point is going to move to the left. So an easy way to kind of remember this is that if the exponent is large, which means if it's positive, you're going to end up with a large number. And if the exponent is negative, which means it's a small number, you will end up with a decimal point or a very small number. And if you're learning anything right now, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on other helpful math videos. All right, so let's go ahead and get to work and do some practice problems on converting scientific notation to standard form. Now our first problem here gives us 2.5 times 10 to the third power. Now in our little step-by-step -step slide, we said that we have to move the decimal point according to the power of 10. So we have our base here, which is 2.5, and it is being multiplied times 10 to the power of 3. Now this three is gonna tell us that we move the decimal three times. Because the three is positive, that means the decimal point is going to move to the right. Probably the most confusing thing about changing numbers from scientific notation to standard form is remembering which way the decimal point moves. An easy way to kinda of trick yourself into remembering this is by rewriting this number in scientific notation and instead of using the exponent, just using the number 10. So 10 to the third power is really like saying 10 times 10 times 10. So you have three tens. So you can rewrite this number like 2.5 times 10 times 10 times 10. And the reason you can rewrite it as 10 times 10 times 10 is because the exponent is three. And if you take the 10 to the third power and expand it like this, it's much easier to see that 2.5 times 10 is 25, times 10 is 250, times 10 is 2,500. So it's much less likely for you to get confused if you do end up writing it out like this. Once you get good at it is you can just write the base 2.5 and then you can use the exponent to move the decimal point to the right. So we're going to move this three times to the right. One, two, three. So our decimal point goes here now. Everywhere we skipped a digit, we're going to add a zero. So we're going to end up adding two zeros here. And our final answer is going to be 2,500. So that is 2.5 times 10 to the third converted to standard form. When we did the problem this way, 2.5 times 10 times 10 times 10, we still end up with 2,500. So it doesn't actually change the answer. It just kind of changes how you think about the problem, just so you don't get confused about which way you move the decimal. Jumping down to our second example problem, this problem gives us 3.6 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now again, we need to convert this number from scientific notation to standard form. This time, the exponent on our power of 10 is negative and it's four. This means that the decimal point will move four times and it's going to move four times to the left. So it's going to move four left. So the decimal point will move four times to the left. Now if you get confused and you can't remember does the negative move the decimal to the left or to the right, you can always expand 10 to the negative fourth out. 10 to the negative first power is like 1 over 10 or it's basically like dividing by 10. Just in case you might get confused about which way the decimal moves, I'm just going to go ahead and expand this out as 3.6 divided by 10 four times because 10 to the negative fourth would be the same thing as dividing by 10 four times. 
Now, when you divide by 10, the number is obviously going to get smaller. So 3.6 divided by 10, divided by 10, divided by 10, divided by 10. So that would do 3.6. I would take our base 3.6 and divide by 10. We'll move it to the left one time. And then divide by 10 moves it to the left one time again. Divide by 10 moves the decimal point one more time. And then the last 10 moves the decimal point to the left one more time. Every time we have a missing digit, we add a zero for the placeholder. So our final solution would be point zero 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 three six. And you'll remember back in the beginning of the video, I mentioned if we have a negative exponent, we'll end up with a small number. That's also another helpful way to remind yourself of which way the decimal is supposed to move. Meaning if you have a negative exponent on a power of 10, you'll always end up with a really small number like a decimal. So in this case, 3.6 times 10 to the negative fourth will turn into 0 0.00036 in standard form. Finally, we're going to go ahead and move on to our last problem, which is number 3. So this one gives us 8 times 10 to the third power. So our base is 8, so I'm going to go ahead and write 8. I already know that this 3 moves a decimal point to the right 3 times. So the 3 is positive, which means it's going to move the decimal point to the right. Anytime you have a whole number or a number without a decimal point, the decimal always goes right behind your number right here. So it starts right here. Now the power of 10 to the third power means we just take this decimal point and it moves 1, 2, 3 times to the right. We add zeros for placeholders if we're missing any digits. And then our final solution is going to be 8 followed by 3 zeros which is just 8,000. So 8 times 10 to the third in scientific notation changes to 8,000. And if you want to do some more practice on converting from scientific notation to standard form, then go ahead and click this link in the video to do some quick practice questions that will give you a grade based on how you did. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you got something out of it and drop a comment telling me if this video helped you or if you need help with something else. See ya.